diplomas to the class of 2020 and recognize our graduating seniors for their accomplishments. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem as performed by our senior quintet. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars
May the life lessons that you have learned throughout these unprecedented times have meaning and significance that will last throughout your life. This chosen class can carry these lessons forward and make a difference in your world. Congratulations, graduates. Godspeed. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce to you Carson Maynard, this year's salutatorian. Good morning, friends, family, administration, and members of the Board of Education. As I begin today, I would like to thank everyone for the support and generosity that has been given to my classmates and I during this trying time. While this is certainly not how I imagined my high school graduation to be, I am grateful for the many people who have tried to make this experience as normal as possible. I believe I speak on behalf of the entire class of 2020 when I say thank you. Thank you for going above and beyond and making the many milestones of our senior year as memorable as they could be during this time. A common theme among the world today is uncertainty, and this uncertainty has struck panic within people worldwide. The current COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound impact on each and every one of us. It has created a sense of fear and doubt, not only in our present lives, but also for our future. It has put an end to many things we once took for granted. Attending school, athletic events, concerts, weddings, funerals, and even high school graduations. We no longer feel comfortable or safe going to the grocery store or eating at a restaurant. We fear hanging out with our friends or going to our grandparents' house. There is no doubt that our economy has suffered. People have lost their jobs, they have taken pay cuts, and many small business owners have had to close their doors. What does this all mean for us? What do we do? Where do we go from here? I wish there was a simple answer, but the truth is nobody knows what the future holds and that is a scary feeling. For the class of 2020, the presence of uncertainty in our lives is stronger than ever. Our time as young and experienced high school students is over. We are transitioning into adulthood and heading off into the real world. Regardless of what path we take, no one can be certain what is to come next. We all have hopes for our future and plans in place to help us achieve our goals. However, it would be unrealistic for us to think our lives will turn out exactly the way we want them to. We would be naive to neglect the unforeseen events that will take place in our futures, which could ultimately hinder the plans we are grasping so tightly to. This uncertainty can be a powerful force within our lives. It causes stress and panic and creates a fear within us. It has the ability to dictate our choices and prevent us from reaching our full potential. We may resist change, even when this change is in our favor, because we are uncertain of the outcome. Oftentimes, this fear prevents us from taking risks. This is because there is no guarantee we will succeed, and the thought of failure can paralyze us. Today, I'm here to say, don't let uncertainty and fear hold you back. Don't limit yourself and avoid taking risks because of the unknown and the fear of failure. Albert Einstein once said, failure is success in progress. Failure is a difficult thing to manage, yet it is something we have all dealt with in some aspect of our lives. Personally, I have made hundreds, maybe thousands of mistakes within my short 18 years, both big and small. Staying up too late the night before my SATs, not studying for an exam so I could go play basketball, or choosing to hang out with my friends instead of completing a homework assignment. I'm sure we can all name dozens of mistakes we have made in our lifetime. It is easy to spend countless hours thinking of what we could have done differently, regretting choices we've made, or things we wish we could change. What we don't always realize is that failure often leads to success with the right attitude and mindset. It's how we choose to react to our experiences and what we choose to do with the lesson being taught. We are still young, only just emerging as independent people. We are about to enter the real world where perfection isn't always an option and sometimes may not even be possible. There will be numerous times that we are faced with decisions in which we are uncertain of the outcome. We are going to be presented with many challenges, make many mistakes, and fail many times over the course of our lifetime. These mistakes will become as important as our successes because they will define us. They can develop us or they can destroy us, and that decision lies in our hands. Those of us heading off to college will be forced to pick a major. For some of us, we are undecided and still exploring our interests. Others may be pursuing a major only to discover their passion lies some, somewhere else. We may have to take additional classes, maybe even stay an extra year, but that is okay because this will be a learning experience. If we never chose the wrong major or took our time selecting one, perhaps we would never realize our true passion. 
Some of us will miss deadlines, be late to class, or fail a test, and that is okay too, because each mistake we make will help us grow as individuals. We will learn to study a little harder, set our alarms a little earlier, and learn how to improve our time management skills. Each mistake we make, each failure we encounter, teaches us something new. Failure is only a misfortune if we allow it to be. If we fail at something and then give up, we have lost. If we neglect to recognize all the lessons that can be taken from each failure, we have lost. But if we change our mindsets, if we begin to see all the positive things to come out of failure, if we realize that failure is an intricate part of success, then our failures aren't really failures anymore. Instead, these experiences become stepping stones to success, stepping stones to developing us into better, more knowledgeable people. As we leave here today, we begin the next chapter of our lives with hopes and dreams. Some of us will travel the world, some will serve our country, some will enter the workforce, and others will attend college. Regardless of where we go from here, the one thing we all have in common is that we will make mistakes. What we must always remember is that it's not what happens to us that defines who we are, it's how we choose to react in these situations that will define and shape our lives. This mindset is more important now than ever. As we live amid the COVID pandemic, so many obstacles will be thrown at us, our plans will go awry, and we will be filled with uncertainty. But we can't let this stop us from moving forward and working towards our goals. We can't let this stop us from bettering ourselves each and every day. So, class of 2020, as we begin our journey into the real world of adulthood, let's not shy away from uncertain situations. Let's not fear the idea of making mistakes. Let us embrace them, learn from them, and strive to turn them into successes. Your future is bright. Follow your dreams and never give up. Take risks, try new things, challenge yourself, and step out of your comfort zone, because each chance we take, each mistake we make, is an opportunity to learn and grow. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Best wishes to a successful future. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite the following senior choir members to the microphone to sing the alma mater. Robert Brown, Elena Jennings, Ariana Halchek, Antonia Modi, and Aiden Sullivan. I ask that everyone please rise. You're welcome to sing along. The words are printed in the program. We Instead, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you grew up in Norwich or lived here for any length of time, 
You've heard someone say, Norwich is a terrible place to live. It's easy to trash it. The poverty rate is almost double that of the national average. Recently, our school district was ranked as one of the 50 worst high schools in upstate New York, and Norwich is one of the top 20 fastest shrinking cities in the state. Those are the facts. And from a number standpoint, Norwich does not seem like such a great place to live. But that is not the Norwich that I know. The town that I grew up in is not defined by those numbers. Perspective is important. Human rights activist Rita Edgar explained it perfectly when she stated, if you are positive, you will see opportunities instead of obstacles. In other words, Norwich is what you make of it. Norwich is an amazing place to come of age. Many of us have fond memories of things like the thrill of riding atop a fire truck in the spring frolic, waiting in the blistering cold at the center of town to meet Santa, the awkward Friday night wide dances where we all hoped that our elementary school crush was lying to us. Many parents and students have experienced the excitement involved with the Cyclones program. Evening practices while the marching band rehearsed on the field beside us, warming up on the dew-covered field before the game. The thrill of hearing our names in the loudspeakers as they introduced us players and cheerleaders. And Coach Tim Thompson wearing his lucky shorts every game, even in the snow. From adolescence to now, we've been lucky enough to grow up in a town where it feels as though everyone knows everyone. No matter where you go, you will likely find a smiling face and someone to have a conversation with. It's a place where we wave hi to our neighbors when we get home at the end of the day, and it's a place where you can safely walk to your friend's house in the middle of the night. The police officers who protect our town know most residents by name, and are more likely to wave hi to you than to pull you over. We have been fortunate enough to attend a school that is staffed by some amazing people. We have teachers like Mr. Platt, Mr. Bernstein, Mrs. Locke, and so many others who go above and beyond to make sure that we succeed. Whether it's by staying late to do extra work with a struggling student, coming in on their own time to set up for events like prom and spirit week, or just by listening when someone's having a problem at home and has no one else to talk to. There are people in our school who make a difference in students' lives every single day. In addition to our teachers, our school sports programs are just as exceptional. While our sports teams are always competitive, I think what happens off the field is even more important. I can't tell you how many times we've had away game for meets where we had more Norwich fans in the stands than the home team. It's a testament to the loyalty and support that we receive from our friends and families. Perhaps the most legendary thing about Norwich sports, though, is the intensity and passion shown by our coaches on the sidelines. The names Hagenbu, Christy, and Bennett come to mind. Now, it's true that we aren't the wealthiest school. We don't have the same facilities or opportunities as some other schools do. But not being handed those things has given us something much more valuable. It has taught us the power of perseverance. We have learned how to prevail with and succeed with what we have. As with so many things in life, a disadvantage can be overcome by simply outworking and outlasting everyone else. Former President Calvin Coolidge said it best when he stated, nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not, genius will not, and education will not. Persistence and determination alone are on demand. We all know that our country has been through some challenging times. Race-based protests have rocked our country, leading to the destruction of property and violent confrontation with law enforcement. A pandemic has spread across the country, taking more than 100,000 American lives. Internationally, things also look weak. Tensions with North Korea are high, the Middle East is in turmoil, and socialism is spreading in South America. Our nation is divided on everything from gun control to controversies about the national anthem before professional sports games. To make matters worse, the economy is facing what someone called the most serious economic crisis since the Great Depression. This sounds awful, doesn't it? My classmates may understandably be asking themselves, why do we have to go out into a world like this? Well, the year I just described to you was 1968. Yet 50 years later, we are facing many of the same problems. What I'm trying to say is that every generation will have to face certain challenges. They will always be here and they're not going away. But these are the cards that we were dealt, and now it's up to us how we play them. I know that we have lost a lot. We have been robbed of the traditions and celebrations of our senior year. The culmination of our high school career is nothing that we hoped it would be. But ultimately, those things are out of our control, so there is no sense of obsessing over it. 
We need to focus our energy on factors that we can't control. And what we can't control is how we approach our futures. Like I said at the beginning of the speech, I'm not going to lie to you. There will be times in our future that will bear strength and character into question. Statistically speaking, it is almost guaranteed that many of us who are graduating here today will face certain challenges. It's likely that some will face problems with addiction. Some of us will have marriages that end in divorce. We will be fired or laid off from jobs. And all of us will have to deal with the death of close friends and relatives. There are a lot of tough things that we will have to face throughout our lives. But I believe we are prepared for those times. I want to leave you with these thoughts. When I look out onto our class, I do not see victims of circumstance. I see a group of people who have persevered through tough times and never lost sight of the end goal. We have been given the tools necessary to succeed. We have learned to make the best of every situation and to find what makes us happy. We are backed by a community of friends and family that have sacrificed for our well-being and success. We have learned that where we start does not determine where we can go. Norwich has given us a lot the past 18 years. But perhaps the most important thing it has taught us is as we look out into this world that we are entering, we can see obstacles or we can see opportunities. The choice is ours. Thank you. Members of the Board of Education of the Norwich City Schools, Dr. Bowers, as principal of Norwich High School, I certify that all students about to receive diplomas have met or exceeded the requirements of Norwich High School and have met or exceeded the requirements for graduation as set forth by the New York State Board of Regents and the New York State Education Department. And now, for the moment you've been waiting for, the awarding of your diplomas. We're here. So what you'll do when I call your name, you'll go behind me, you can use the ramp or the stairs, proceed to Mr. Williams and Dr. Bowers, who will present you with your diploma, keep your mask on, and then you may go to the white X, remove your mask, hide it behind your diploma, Pose to the lovely Miss Corver right there in the middle. Families, you may come right up to that bouquet of flowers and take pictures right up close and personal. It's okay. And then you go up the steps and back to your seat. So our first graduate is Samantha Savage. She 
plans on attending Buffalo University in the fall, and her favorite teacher was Miss Wren. Congratulations, Melissa. I wanted to take a few moments to congratulate this group of fine young men and women who are part of the class of 2020. I have searched and pondered for the words to adequately express how important you are to me personally, and at the same time, capture this moment in history in some memorable fashion for you. You are a beautiful group of young adults who are filled with promise and compassion. I want you to know that you are a part of the fabric of my life. You have each blessed me in a unique way, and for that, I am forever grateful. Throughout my life, I have often found strength and comfort in quotes, so I'd like to share a few with you now. Eckhart Tolle wrote, Life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness. Whatever the reason, I believe we are each exactly where we should be, and there is purpose to all of our experiences. Our perspective on that is what really makes all the difference. As difficult as it may be, try not to define this time by what you lost, but rather define it by how you have chosen to respond. This can and should be a time of innovation, a time of rebuilding, a time to examine who we are at, a, at our core and what we will do to foster social justice in our world. May the knowledge you have acquired in Norwich High School provide you with the courage to step out in the world and not only create the best version of yourself, but the best version of our world possible for those around you. May you envision greatness for yourself and others and seek it in all that you do. Tap into your consciousness in times of joy and in times of difficulty and let it guide you to right decisions. Remember the words of Etienne de Brille. I shall pass through this way but once. Any good thing, therefore, I can do, or any kindness I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Continue to be there for each other, for support, protection, guidance, and safety. Choose kindness any chance you have. As a class, you have been shown tremendous generosity by those in the Norwich community. Keep those memories close to your heart and use them as an example of the collective responsibility we have to rebuild our communities, face challenges with insight, and foster growth as a nation. You are the change our world needs. That little seed, that new idea, it's there just waiting for you to take hold and pursue it with passion. As you chase those dreams and journey beyond NHS, Remember the words of Barack Obama. You won't get it right every time. You'll make mistakes like we all do. But if you listen to the truth that's inside yourself, even when it's hard, even when it's inconvenient, people will notice. They'll gravitate towards you. And you'll be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. We are proud of all that you have accomplished. We honor your resiliency in the face of uncertainty, and most of all, we wish you all the best life has to offer as you continue onto the next part of your life's adventure. And now, to make it official, I need a brave soul who for three seconds will turn your tassel in front of everybody. Any takers? All oh, right, right up there, Melissa, right to the gold dot. Graduates, stand up. This is a real official ceremony. Right on that gold circle and face your fellow graduates on the, got it? Count of three, you're gonna go from one side to the other. You ready? One, two, three. Thank you. And now, as high as you can without catching that cap in the rafters, we're gonna do another count of three for the infamous cap toss. You ready? And check ladies, sometimes it's all pinned down in the bobby pins. Y'all good ladies? Ready? One, two, three! <laughs> in a moment you'll be exiting the gym, heading down the social studies hallway to the 
the auditorium for some great pictures. And we ask that you take with us, with you, our sincere thanks for your patience, perseverance, and understanding. May you carry with you our gratitude and best wishes for a safe and happy celebration of the fine accomplishments of these men and women. It gives me great pleasure to present and congratulate one last time the Norwich Class of 2020.